Welcome back. Danny, this might be more up our alley. Did you know that it's possible to become a master of sake? No, I did not. And maybe we will succeed at this. Yeah. Or Malou will, because Malou Nubla is with an actual <laughs> sake master who's going to teach her all about the Japanese alcohol and what it takes to become one. Hey, Malou. <laughs> Hey, Danny. Hey, Jess. Good morning. You know, I love my sake, but there are actually a few things that I don't know about sake. So we're going to learn from the sake master himself, Stuart. Hi, Stuart. Hi, how you doing? Great, thank you. So uh, what makes you a sake master? I had to pass a test in Tokyo, a Kiki Sake Shi exam. Uh, it took me over 15 years to take the test. I actually failed the first time and had to <laughs> do it again to pass. <laughs> but now you're the master. Uh, yes. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> Thank All you right. very much. So you've, you've mastered it. I, I like to think so. Uh, I don't know if that's possible. Wh but what yes. did you call the sake master? How do you uh, say Kiki that? Kiki Sake Shi. Kiki Sake Shi. Yes. Okay. So not only are you a sake master, but you also make sake. I do. I work for a brewery in Yonezawa Yamagata uh, called Shindo Shuzo. I've been with them for almost seven years. I make uh, We make 69 different sakes. Wow. Uh, and I touch a good amount of them while I'm there. Okay, so uh, how difficult is it to make sake? It's very difficult. It's extremely labor-intensive. I wake up every three hours to turn koji. Uh, basically, I live on site, sleep on the floor. Uh, it takes about 40 days to ferment a batch of sake from start to finish. Do you age it? Uh, no, usually, I mean, you can, but usually sake, the fresher the better, okay. is normally. We also have to mention what sake is. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's rice. It is rice. Uh, so it's uh, just water, rice, koji mo yeast. That's it. Uh, so it's one of the cleanest alcohols in the world. Okay. Uh, so definitely, and if it's more akin to making beer than it is making wine. How many different types of sake are there? <sighs> there are a lot. Like I said, <laughs> we make six to nine different styles, and there's many different ways to brew sake and mill the rice in different ways, different yeast, different rice varietals, everything. Okay, let's talk about learning how to drink sake. So yeah, I see absolutely. it, like, so basically, like, um, do you drink it hot or cold or? Actually, there are nine different temperatures for sake in Japan. So nine? Really, nine. You so know what really, they are? <laughs> I don't know if I can name them all off the top of my head right now, unfortunately. Uh, I'd have to study a little bit more. Uh, but there are nine different temperatures to serve sake, pardon me. Um, and it all depends on the sake, something really clean and elegant. You'd want to serve it cold, like a Sauvignon Blanc, for instance. You don't want to get that warm. Uh, something that's a little more umami, a little bit richer, stands up to the heat a lot better. When should you drink hot sake? Actually, I drink a lot of hot sake in Japan because I'm actually there during the winter. So usually in winter time when it's cold, you want something to warm you up. Or something you can do with the sake that you can't do with wine as well as a pairing is you can like make the soup and the sake kind of the same temperature. Okay. All right. And so for someone who has never tried sake before, what yeah. should they first try the first time? Uh, it all depends. I think if you're going to buy a like a random bottle of sake or go to start drinking sake, I think price is an important key. Uh, so if you buy a bottle of sake that's between twenty and thirty dollars, you're probably going to get a pretty good one. You should probably start there and then go out. Don't do it as a sake bomb. Don't do it as a sake bomb, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then when you actually drink sake, what kind of glassware do you use? Here? So for hot sake, I use like ochocos like this uh, because they kind of have they're hot, so a lot more alcohol comes off. So uh, you want to drink it faster. Uh, when I do cold sake, I like to serve it wine glasses. I want to show how elegant sake is. Uh, I want you to be able to drink it like a wine, swirl it like a wine. Okay, all right. So what's the first one you're going to pour for us? So this is brewed by a brew. This is actually brewed by me uh, at Shindo Shuzo. Uh, the name of the sake is called Kurozaimon, which is named after the first person who opened the brewery in 1850, Kurozaimon Shindo. Uh, it is Yamagata 5 yeast, so very classic Yamagata style. Lots of fruit tones, green apples, pears, okay. uh, a little bit of fennel pollen. Okay, so when you actually taste, is there a certain order that you go in when you taste yeah, sake? You should definitely taste just like wine. You should do sake just from lighter to richer. And I know a lot of people think sake kind of all tastes the same, or that's a common misnomer, I should say. Um, but sake is very different. It's, it has more flavor profiles than most wine. What does that taste at the very end there? Uh, definitely. Like that... So I use a rice flour called omachi I get from Okayama. It okay. gives the sake this little bit of weight, kind of this hazelnut kind of quality through yeah, the back. Yeah, nutty. I was yeah. going to say, nutty towards the end there. Okay. What's the next one? Uh, so we're going to do this one next. This is a brew by a brewery called Shirataki Shuzo, or Jozo Mizuno Gotoshe. It's from uh, Niigata. Uh, so let me show you real quick. So Japan would be kind of shaped like that. Tokyo, Niigata would be there. Uh, so very high in the mountains, very soft water, a little softer style, uh, kind of the snow melt kind of texture to it. Uh, definitely some stone fruit though, apricot, nectarine, white peach. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely the white peach. Yeah, definitely white peach, right? And then the one that a lot of people are familiar with is the um, the non the unfiltered. The unfiltered one. This is actually what's known as the Usu Nagori, so a much lighter style Nagori. This is from the brewery I work at as well. It's called uh, Gasanyu, which is my mentor. Uh, Shindo-san's label. Um, this is a much lighter Nagori, uh, so it's slightly unfiltered, yep. so it gives it a little bit creamier, a little bit richer nice. ty style to that it. That is Definitely. really, really nice. Okay, and then Stuart, finally, what should you pair sake with? You can pair sake with anything. 
Uh, not just Japanese not food. Not just Japanese food. I actually like to pair it with Italian food for the most part because Italian food has a lot of umami and sake has a lot of umami. They kind of go really well together. Italian Even food. Even pizza. Yeah, pizza, pasta. Are you serious? Serious. Pizza. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but okay. anything you pair with wine, I can pair with sake. Okay, and then like here, obviously all the different sushis and sashimis are really good, right? Right. Uh, sake and sashimi is always a classic pairing. Uh, we can do sake with robata as well, like grilled meats, things like that. Uh, sake definitely has enough weight to stand up to that as well. Okay, and then finally, you shouldn't really, you shouldn't pour your own sake. No, traditionally you shouldn't pour your own sake. Okay. I mean, I do is a lot, but you shouldn't. You? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, right? No, it's not. It's just a traditional thing. You should definitely not. You, it's generosity, like Japanese generosity. Okay. You should, someone else should pour for you. All right, kumpai, Stuart. Kumpai. Thank you very much. There My you pleasure. go. Jess and Danny, I will now pour you some sake. It's for good luck. That's my thing. Come by. Come by.